All right, hit it, Steve. It started here. I had bought a last minute ticket to DC for the Women's March in 2017. My sister was living in DC and I hadn't seen her for a while. I wanted to be part of history. I wanted to raise my voice for my rights, for women's rights. The point is, isn't whether or not you agree with my marching. The point is what I learned and how it ignited me to action. Walking down Pennsylvania Avenue as we approached the Trump Hotel and I was faced with middle fingers flying up into the crowd. I felt a gut reaction. It physically pained me, frustration, sadness, and a sea of incredible women where I had considered my pilgrimage to DC to be for women's rights, for human rights, not against something. I looked over at four young women, maybe college age, who were looking up at a fifth floor window of the hotel where three small children stood standing looking out down at the crowd. The four women were screaming, we hate you. I certainly wasn't there to hate anyone. Hate was the worst four letter word that I could use in my house growing up and I carry that with me. I didn't want to march fueled by hate. I flew home with sadness, but also a desire to be part of something that could offer a positive message in the midst of what was already proving to continu continue to be a very divided country, but so many had not yet understood it or come to terms with it. Maybe because we chose not to see it, maybe because of privilege, and maybe because we didn't have to understand it before. The word that came to mind for me was compassion. I thought back to going to my hometown in Wisconsin four years earlier when my mom had taken my sister and I to an art installation called The Compassion Project. We walked into a local gallery and were immediately hugged by this, by this concept of compassion and thousands of pieces by local school children depicting this idea. Over 6,000 canvases were displayed, each one created by a K-12 student in the local district. We walked around and cried, completely overwhelmed by compassion. Sometimes it's sad, sometimes it's uplifting, sometimes it's easy to understand, sometimes it's not. Each piece had a number on it that coincided with an artist statement that we could read. Seeing the project in Wisconsin five years ago immediately made me want to bring the project to my own community in Bozeman at some point. But I was neither in the right place, the right job, nor did I have the right motivation to pursue it until the march. Instead, I thought it would be a great idea to take it on with a full-time job and trying to finish a dissertation. <laughs> Thanks to my boss. <laughs> And so the project began in Bozeman. I had meetings with people from MSU and other community members who might be interested in the project. It was important to me that it was a nonpartisan project, a project that would bring people together to have conversations around compassion, what it means, how to recognize it, how to practice it, and why it's important. In TCP, our definition of compassion is mindful support, relief, and genuine human kindness for others, ourselves, and our environment. Our planning committee determined this definition a couple years ago. We wanted it to be inclusive and to remind our constituents that there are a lot of pieces com to compassion, one of the most important, which is self-compassion. Our compassion crew often asks each other, is your compassion bucket full? An ongoing reminder to take care of ourselves throughout what has been thousands of volunteer hours in addition to full-time jobs, families, friends, and everything in between. It's incredibly important to all of us that we keep this bucket metaphor in our mind as we work together. That one's at the Emerson. We make choices. One of the choices we all can make is to be more compassionate in our own lives. Compassion isn't just kindness or being nice or the concept of empathy. Compassion is intentional. It takes action. Kindness and empathy are, are wonderful, but compassion is action. A choice to save space for someone or to save space for yourself. When I first started this project, I thought no one could argue with compassion. I was wrong, and sometimes it's totally broken my heart. People have asked how I could be in charge of this project if I share frustration with the current political climate. I believe it's possible to be frustrated by certain policies and treatment of marginalized groups and also want to have a conversation and wonder and try to understand the lens through which other people look. Last fall, the Compassion Project curriculum was implemented in over 200 classrooms around Bozeman, Livingston, and Belgrade. We facilitated over 50 community workshops with Montana State students, faculty, and staff, as well as other local organizations, businesses, and the public. We've cut, moved, and numbered over 10,000 pieces of eight and a half by eight and a half inch wood, and have recently wondered about the life story of one block. How many hands has it touched? How many lives has it touched? And the impact it has made in each of these people's lives. Our hope is that with these installations, that that number will continue to grow. We have successfully installed approximately 6,000 pieces of beautiful artwork around five different locations. There's 1,400 in this picture alone. 
The Emerson has the largest installation with over 4,000 pieces. The smaller installations are at Red Tractor, Sola Cafe, Fork and Spoon, and one more to go up at the Public Library on May 1st. We also have a mobile app that people can interact with the artist statements. Moving forward, the Compassion Project will become a nonprofit. We already are gaining momentum with other communities and districts calling for our curriculum and help in implementing their own project. We plan to train them on fundraising, grant writing, curriculum, and hope to let this project spread its wings into other communities. One of the things I truly love about this project is that it is a positive spin on how to quell negative behavior and language. Instead of teaching kids what not to do with anti-bullying programming, let's teach them what to do, how to treat one another, what is kindness and compassion, how to recognize it, why it's important, and how to practice it even when it's difficult. So I challenge you all today to choose to be compassionate in times of frustration, in times of misunderstandings or anger, to choose to listen to listen and listen to understand, not to listen to respond to invite into the conversation instead of pushing out. I challenge you to work to be compassionate for yourself and others. We don't always know what is beneath the surface. Unless we are willing to look beyond, to ask curious questions, to listen, to dig deeper, we can't understand or even try to understand. We have to be willing to wonder, to be curious. That lens through which others see is powerful and is important to be willing to understand, even if we don't agree with it. So I leave you with this my morning mantra. Good morning. Eyes up. Hearts up. Mind sharp. Compassion on full blast. Sips coffee. Tea. Okay, let's go. Mm -hmm.